Hey! Pick em pie, big gun Brian Petrie, giving out the lot. One is mortal, you know it won't miss. Gonna take a shot, dog lot, that's the underdog. Yeah, they in the hunt. Send them home, that's KO or submission. Yeah, somebody done. Slime ball, yeah, that's the parlay. We gon' make it known. Pick em pie from MMA tapes. Yeah, let's get it going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Woo! I love the yeah, cause I clear my throat, cause every time I start this fucking show. The phlegm comes up for whatever reason. What's up with the what's up? Woo, we got a card. We got a card. I love this card. When when March was coming, March, I told you, it was stacked. This main event was really jumped out to me, and I think it's amazing. And a March has been great, right? I was so confident last week, and I did not. I was, I'm down from last week, and I didn't hit my marks. I didn't hit my spots that I, you know, and I was really confident. Right, I, I, I thought I was going to do all right. This week, not as confident, which might be a good thing. Gambling, you know, positive vibes only. But, you know, gambling can get a little tricky here. Now, before we go, I was literally delaying recording this because I was on Twitter. Ba, 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 in the mud. In the mud with the people. I fucking love being in the mud sometimes. Listen, Colby Covington, okay? Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Listen, people, I tweeted out, hey, Colby Covington, tread lightly. People assume that I, I'm going to go handle myself. Listen, Colby Covington is a professional fighter, one of the best in the world. I'm not dumb enough to think that I could kick his ass, okay? But when you come at John Anik, I don't care how big you are, how good you are, how tough you are, what your position on this world is, you go at Anik, you get me. And the reason I said that was because Anik's got an army. Anik's got bodies. I just happen to be one of those bodies, 6'2", 276, <laughs> you know. And Colby Covington has a fucking reputation of going to press charges by getting hit, punched in the mouth, you know, outside of a restaurant. That's all I'm saying. You threaten John Anik, bing, the ears come up. I'm just saying tread lightly. John Anik's got people on him. You want Ray Long to come knock on your door, huh? Is that what you want? You want Ray Longo to send some guys down to Florida? You know, because there's no there's no Italians. There's no uh, people from New York that retire in Florida. That never happens. Ray Longo's got people in that state, okay? You got Ken Flo, who still can get it done, who elbow your goddamn head off the planet. Just saying, you're taking your anger out on John Anik because he was nice to you and he's friends with Bilal. That can happen, guy. Bilal has the best case for the shot. Colby Covington, you're getting, I'm getting arguments online. Oh, he's the most marketable guy. Okay. I can't debate that because Colby does have a, a section of this population that really follow him and think he's elite, but he's two and two. And his last four, his last two wins were Tyron Woodley, the guy that got knocked out by Jake Paul, got beat by Jake Paul twice, that Tyron Woodley. And Jorge Masvidal, who hasn't won a fight in years, he's going to go get dog whacked by Burns on April 8th, okay? Those are his last two wins. He sat out, and listen, credit where credit's due, B. Schaub, I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, but I think Brendan Schaub hit the nail on the head. Colby had all these charges pressed against Masvidal. I can't train because I have headaches and I have brain damage because you punched me in the face. You sucker punched me. I got to get my teeth fixed, blah, 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 blah. The UFC goes, hey, bud, okay? You cut the weight, you show up, you get 25K, you drop that lawsuit, you get a title shot. But if you're going to sit there on credit alone, on, on rankings, on what they have done lately, and you're going to say Bilal doesn't deserve it over Colby, your brain needs to get fixed, right? There's the argument, Colby's more marketable, blah, 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 blah. Leon Edwards, the champion, has came out and said, I will not fight Colby. I will not sign that dotted line. He does not deserve it. They did not do that to me. This is Dana White privilege. And he's 100% right. Bilal has won eight in a row. Main event at two of those. Has unfinished business with Leon Edwards. If you don't think this guy deserves it, what are we doing here, right? What are we doing, right? I know people are like, oh, well, you're close to Bilal. I don't know Bilal personally. Obviously, I'm part of the Anakin Foy family. He's a part of that channel as well. I love Jason and Nick. I've never met Bilal. I've been on the show. But 
I'm a level-headed, reasonable guy. When a guy won eight in a row, beat the next contender of Sean Brady, undefeated everyone loves, and finished him, yeah, the guy deserves a title shot, okay? Right? He was fighting during Ramadan, cutting weight without eating and shit like that. I can't even imagine how hard that is, okay? Well, Lau deserves it. Call me a nut sucker. Say I'm sucking on his balls. Say I'm close with the Indic and whatever. I'm biased. What I, okay, throw those all at me. But then look at me in the fucking eyes and you tell me that Bilal doesn't deserve it over Colby based on what he has done. And to steal a quote from my boy, not really my boy, but Dustin Poirier paid in full. Bilal is paid in motherfucking full. So having some fun on Twitter, though, having some fun on Twitter, um, people coming at me left and right, which I kind of love. Because this is something like, listen, if you come at me because you hate me or whatever like that, there's nothing I can do about that, right? You know what I mean? There's, we're not, I'm not, I'm not going to change your mind, but this is a debatable topic that I'm having fun with. You know what I mean? Let's debate it. You know what I mean? But then, of course, people, you know, these little kids, you know, they debate you and then they throw insults at you. They can't just have a civilized debate. They got to fucking throw the insults at you. But, uh, Colby Covington. John Annis got bodies, okay? Tread lightly. Tread lightly, my friend. Or you're going to be pressing more charges, okay? You're going to be, get really comfortable with the police in Florida after you threaten John Annick because, you know, I, I, you know, listen, I know Colby's a character. I think we all, uh, Colby's like the nicest guy in the world is what I hear. He does a bit. He's on camera. He does this thing. I don't know if the uh, the lines have crossed or blurred. He doesn't really know what he's doing anymore. But everything he says is written. It's an it's an act off camera. He's he apparently the nicest guy in the world. I you know he's on MMA fighting with Mike Keck. Maybe that's just something you know that popped in his head or whatever like that. I truly don't think he means real malice towards John Anik. I think that's ridiculous. But if he does, <laughs> dread lightly. <laughs> I love how. It's so funny how people get upset. They're like, oh, what, you're going to what, you're gonna do something? Well, yeah, me and fucking 10 other people, not just me, 10 other people will. Yeah, man, fuck yeah. All right, here we go, fight time. We got uh, Tamir's. T- Tamir. You know what? I'm going to pull it up on here because my office is a little dark. So I ain't going to be able to read from my paper all that well. We'll go old stinkology here. Uh, Tamir's Vidal, plus 100. Lines moving, boys. Lines moving versus Haley Cowan. Uh, she is a minus 120. Uh, really surprised by this opening line here. I think Vidal who debuted against Ramona Pasquale. Uh, Ramona Pasquale, excuse me. Flying knee knockout in round one. She looked good. Um, you know, there's a lot of labels of her undersized. I think she's explosive. She has good submissions on her record. Um, she looks pretty well rounded for being pretty young. And then you got Haley Cowan, who's just, you know, prim and proper, pretty girl from Baylor. This is the girl who was supposed to fight a couple weeks ago. Athletic, has good, you know, athletic genes, can push a pace, but isn't the most well rounded fighter. Um, I think, I don't know I mean, how she's going to win. She's going to take it down. She might get submitted. She's going to stand up. She's going to get knocked out. I think she's going to want to maybe stand up and clinch. That's cool, kind of like these inexperienced fighters do is 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 they don't necessarily want to go to the ground because, you know, she's got, uh, but that has got a lot of submissions on her record. So I'm going to stand up a little bit, right? But then I'm going to crash into my strikes and we're going to clinch. I'm going to clinch it. That's the comfortable spot because I can't get struck from the outside. And uh, I got I to gotta cut this tapology off because, geez, well, Pete's. Topology, man. You just you just kill me. I got a I got a fucking beast of a computer and you are killing me with the just the CPU that you use. Jeez. Anyway, Vidal is a as a dog here. If you get her at dog money, run and get her at dog money. Hungry dogs run faster, baby. Hello? Hello? That's a hey, dog. dog. I love Vidal here at the spot. Listen, I just think she's warm around round. Now Haley could get it done just be by being the more athletic fighter, right? That we've seen that before, better cardio and, and just wants it a little more and, and can really win it a close decision here. I can see that happening as well. But when you're giving me this close of line, I'm going to pick the better fighter, in my opinion, the better MMA fighter. I think that's Vandal. We haven't seen enough her in the UFC, only round one. Um, I want to see her get extended. Maybe she says cardio issues I don't know about, but uh, I think she's dangerous ever. She can knock you out and she's got some submissions. Uh, Cowan's two losses do come by submission, I believe. Maybe one was a split, but she has been submitted before. Um, and then she looked good in that first round of the contender series, and then meow, 
boom, boom, cliff dove and won a very close split decision. Uh, you know, she was good to get signed regardless because of the cutie cutie nature. Great story. Girl from Baylor. We need more, you know, uh, um, athletes from college. We as an MMA need athletes from college who their athletic careers are over and there's really not a pro feature from them. The only pro thing they can do is the Olympics. And when that's kind of over, they still have all these athletic genes. They've obviously been doing this sport since high school. Come over to MMA, right? Come over to MMA. If you get committed to it, that athletic gene can go a long way. For some people. Some people can't. But, I mean, sometimes it does. All right, next up, Vincia Salvatore, minus 115 versus Victor Optimorano. Banger of a fight. This might be fighting that. Listen, Salvatore was my motor lock when he was going to fight in Columbus. Columbus fight fell apart. Uh, great striker, has struggled on the ground, was on the contender series with that wild fight. He threw 69 punches in that first round against Shannon Ross, dropped Shannon Ross like five times. Shannon Ross has already debuted in the UFC. He been, he's been finished to the body, but Salvatore is a legit striker. The biggest problem, the biggest knock on him is obviously if he gets to the ground, it's to be a problem. He, you know, he's very explosive on the ground, but he gives up a lot of stuff. Then you got Victor Altamirano, who, who can mix it up, who's leading a few takedowns, but his last two fights, he's, he's been wanting to stand up. He's kind of a wild man. You know, he's Viva La Mexico, baby. This dude's a gamer. This dude comes out and he scraps. Got a good record. His losses are close losses. Also from the tennis series, but my initial read is Salvatore's a dog. You know, not really a dog, but he's got that dog in him. And I feel like if this is a stand-up fight, I think Salvatore's going to pick him apart. Um, I would like to see this guy, Salvatore, that is, show a little bit of cardio here. Hasn't fought in a while. Came out of the contender series. Dana White loved him. One of the best performances I've seen. I mean, he looked super sharp and durable. Took some big shots. Flyweight unders are crushing right now. So hammer the under in this fight. Uh, it's early in the week, so I don't have a lot of props in front of me. But the under in this fight is is something that I I think, you know, flyweight unders is, is you know, parlay all flyweight unders on this card, right? Just fucking parlay them all. Why not? It's hitting, baby. But I think this is going under. I think both these guys are scrappy. And the only way it might not go under is is Salvatore's never been finished on the feet. Victor Moreno's never been knocked out. I don't believe he's ever been knocked out. Um, so this could just be a fucking banger. A b -b banger of a fight. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it is. But give me Salvatore, my initial read from back in, uh, was it Vegas? Did I say Columbus? I meant Vegas. He was supposed to fight in December. Uh, my initial read was Salvatore. I'm going to keep with that. I love this fight. This fight could be a banger. Under two and a half is what I'm playing. Under one and a half. Uh, under one and a half scares me. Under two and a half, I like. Um, but uh, Or you could just be a contrarian and go, you know what? Flyway under has been hitting too much. Both these guys are dogs. I'm going to hit the over. Probably nice little money, uh, plus money on that right there. But give me Vincent Salvatore. Next up, you got Manuel Torres. He is minus 155 versus Trey Ogden. Plus 135. Old Trey's the new head coach over in Kansas City is what I've been told. Decent grappler. Um, you know, he's he's his last time out was so frustrating to me. So his last time out, Daniel Zellhuber. Zellhuber was this up-and-coming guy, really good striker. Everyone kind of liked him, including myself. He's a huge favorite. He fought Trey Ogden. Trey Ogden landed one takedown. But outstruck him 71 52. Zell Huber froze. Did not want to get into a firefight with Trey Ogden for some reason. He's primarily a grapper. His takedown accuracy is 15%, which I don't love. He's only landed two takedowns in the UFC. He landed one on Jordan Levitt, which a fight he lost by split decision. He got outstruck in that fight. And then he landed one against Daniel Suber, but Zell Huber. Zell Huber, why do I keep I keep saying his name 10 different ways? Um, he got back to his feet. Now you enter Manuel Torres. This guy just, you know, he just knocks people out. He ain't no fucking dead some, right? Don't know if his skills are limited or if he's if he is that good, if he is that potent finisher, because Trey Ogden's never been knocked out before. Trey Ogden's, I, uh, you know, Daniel Zellhuber was a very good striker, is a very good striker, and Trey Ogden, like, froze him, right? I don't know if that's because Zellhuber's young or the moment got to him. Don't know if it's going to happen with Torres. Torres, I think, is the better striker, the more powerful guy here. Ogden's not a bad dog play. You know, if you want to reach for Ogden because he can lean on the grappling, even though his takedowns haven't been all that successful in the UFC, they actually haven't really looked all that good either. But he seems to be a strong guy. His cardio is shored up. The problem is he might be carrying the weight on the shoulders. I mean, James Krause built that fucking gym in Kansas City, and now he's gone, allegedly. And Ogden's in, and it's like, okay, I'm coaching and I'm fighting now. You know, that sometimes doesn't mix, or it makes a fighter better. You never really know. There's always what uh, you know, fine line there. Ogden's been around forever. He's got a million fights. Manuel Torres, though, 
big, powerful guy. I'm going to lean Torres here. I just think he's better everywhere. Cardio. Always bet cardio is what my guy Christian says, and it's very good. I say oh, ABT, always bet talent. I think Torres is a more talented guy, but that cardio can loom heavy if he doesn't have any. Um, and let's just say he does. He has 100% takedown defense, which is nice, but he hasn't really fought too many grapplers. You know, he fought Colton England on the contender series, knocked him out. Then he fought Craig, uh, Frank Camacho, knocked him out in the first round, right? Not a lot of guys are going to be jumping for takedowns. He touches people, he deads them. That's another, you know, obviously, you know, when you're capping a fight, you got to be worried about that. It's like, oh, this guy, he touches your dead, but if, what if Trey doesn't die? Right? What if Trey doesn't eat that shit like it was fucking Sunday lunch? And then he might be a little worried, like, oh, fuck, right? You know, so there's always that uh, case in here, too. But I'm going to stick with Torres. I don't love him. I'm not overly confident. Trey's never been knocked out. So I think the knockout number might be a little okay. The finish number might be okay. Trey has only been finished by submission, which I don't think Manuel Torres is going to do. Could be wrong. Maybe play it by submission. Maybe, you know, fucking club and sub, baby. Club and sub could happen here. Uh, yeah, so next up, CJ Vergara, minus 255 versus Daniel De Silva, Daniel Lacerta, Daniel Brazil. This guy's got fucking 20 last names. I'm going to go to Silva because that's what it says on my paper. You got CJ Vergara, who has not really entered the UFC on fire, right? This dude was a flashy striker outside the UFC. Debuts on the Contender Series against Bruno Correa. Knocks him out with a knee, round one. Beautiful knee, you know. Debuts against Eddie Osborne in the UFC, Right. Falls a little short, even though he outstruck Ode. Ode got that takedown. Um, you know, it was it, it maybe was a, a bad decision. I haven't rewatched that fight. I did rewatch his fight against Clinton Rodriguez. He out he got outstruck by Rodriguez and got taken down multiple times and won that fight by split decision, which was another weird decision. But then he got finished his last time out by Tatsu Atara, who I think is a legit fucking prospect. Then you got Daniel Lacerda, Daniel De Silva, Daniel De Lewis. This is probably Daniel D. Lewis, you know, just researching a role. That's why he's fucking 20 different names. Uh, you know, knocked out by Jeff Molina. Knee barred by Figgy, Francis, Francis Figgy, Little Figgy, and then Victor Armando knocked him out in uh, all in round one. Round two was Jeff Molina. Jeff Molina, if you remember that fight, uh, you know, Jeff Molina came out as bye. And guess what? I don't care. Suck as much dick as you want. I don't give a fuck. Um... I have not seen the video. I do not want to watch the video. That's just, you know, not my cup of tea, but, you know, do you? But uh, listen, Molina, Molina knocked him out, but that first round was wild. And you look at Daniel Silva, CJ Vergara is a good striker, came in the UFC as a good striker, has some trouble in the UFC, hasn't had the best record in the UFC, but is, is a good striker. Comes out of Pete Spratt's camp out of there in, uh, I believe he's Pete Spratt's camp out of uh, Texas there. And, he, and he's good. I think he's good. His, his pre-UFC days were a lot better than when he's shown in the UFC. UFC jitters you know, jumping talent. There's a lot of factors I could play in there. Then you got Daniel Silva. This guy just doesn't go to decision ever, ever. So, whoosh, woo, green hammer, baby, green hammer play. Now, I do not have the props right now. When I edit this video, I'll slap the props in because hopefully they'll be there by next Tuesday when I'm doing this. But CJ Vergara, by knockout, you can go round one. That's a little that's that's going to be a little uh risky. I would go CJ Vergara by knockout. That's the green hammer play. Mini green hammer play, which my kids have the mini green hammer. This came in a pack of three. Mini green hammer play, which is what I'll be playing as well. Under this fight doesn't go to the distance. This is an under play. Under one and a half, two and a half, whatever they said it, under. Vergara knockout green hammer play again. Hopefully I'll put it on the screen once uh, once those lines are available, not available to me right now, but the green motherfucking hammer three and one in the year. I think that might be a plus number because Vergara does not have a knockout in the OC besides the contender series. We might be looking at a plus green hammer play. I got a little greedy with Fazeev last week rebounding three and one in the year green hammer green hammer hammer it. Let's go. Uh, and then the under as well. Maybe you can switch those. If you don't like a BP, Vergara doesn't finish in the UFC, right? He just hasn't. I don't like that as the green hammer. I like the under more. Switch it up. Mini green hammer of the knockout, big green hammer of the under. But my play is going to be the, you know what I mean? I'm just giving the blueprint. You figure it out, babe. Okay? I give the outline. You fill in the words. Huh? Huh? How about it? All right, next up, Trevin Giles versus Preston Parsons. Trevin Giles minus 110. Preston Parsons 110. We got to pick him. 
And I'm Pickham Petrie. So they call me in the streets, babe. Pickham Petrie. Um, I usually love picking fights. Don't love this fight. Have a tough read on this fight. Trevin Giles is a guy who was almost more talented when he's a full-time fireman, or excuse me, full-time policeman. And now that he's like transitioned to a full-time fighter and he's at 170 and I don't know what happened. This guy was a king in the NFA. He came in the UFC. He's got a lot of good wins, a lot of close fights. And then what are we going to do? Preston Parsons debuted against Daniel Rodriguez, did not go his way. And then I believe, who do you rebound against? Come on, Ryan. I'm going to look it up. I don't know. If the, he rebounded against Evan Elder, who looked really good his last time out. Uh, laying a four takedowns over Evan Elder, 75 strikes. So Preston Parson looked pretty good. Big, thick guy, strong dude. Wants to get you to the ground, Trevin Giles. Going to be the bigger guy here because he's, you know, coming from 185 to 170. He's tall, he's lean. His boxing's good. His cardio is not. His takedown defense is okay. He's not great off his back. He likes to get on top. There's a lot of moving parts here. I think Preston Parsons, if he gets on top, if he dictates the pace here, if he pushes a good pace, he wins this fight by decision. I don't know if he can get uh, Trevor Giles out of there. Trevor Giles is pretty good on the ground. It's like he just goes to the ground and he, and he gets submitted, right? His biggest problem is maybe on the feet. But I think cardio plays a factor here, and I think Preston Parsons cut, pushes a good pace. In a, in, you know, he landed four takedowns last time. Maybe cut that in half, maybe land two takedowns with some striking. And uh, hey, 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 my fucking daughter, get out of here, yo, know, get out of here. Jeez, trying to record, and she's fighting in the room like there's a fire in here. <laughs> that was funny. Um, but no, Preston Parsons is a play here. Pick and Petrie says Preston Parsons. Don't know why I did the finger guns. Uh, regrettable. Should I edit it? Yes, but I'm not. Uh, next up, you got Steven Peterson, minus 170 versus Lucas Alexander, plus 145. I thought coming in this fight, when I saw this fight in the sheet, I was like, oh, another chance to fade Steven Peterson. Minus 170 for Steven Peterson, the Superman tattoo, right? And then I looked up Lucas Alexander, and I'm like, man, I don't think I can fade Steven Peterson. Steven Peterson's tough. He's durable. He's been finished one time by knockout. He takes big, big shots. Okay on the ground, but he just, unless you're Chase Hooper, you know, he ain't looking great in there. He's fighting close fights. But Lucas Alexander, 7-3, and three, kind of a wild man. He's been finished before. Doesn't really know what he wants to do. I know he's a scrapper. He's a little long. He's, he's going to have a reach advantage over uh, Steven Peterson here. I'm going to pick Steven Peterson by decision. I don't think Steven Peterson's a great potent finisher. I think his fight IQ is is is, is a little bad as well. Fall Chase Super, piece Chase Super up on the feet, and then continue to go to the ground with Chase Super, where it could have been a nightmare for him. He survived, but what are you doing? You know what I mean? What are we doing going on the ground? That's the only way this guy's going to win. Huh. So give me uh, Steven Peterson, complete pass, not going to touch this fight, maybe over, maybe we will go to the decision. Lucas Alexander is a little bit of a wild boy. A little bit of a wild wow boy. Um, but I like Peterson here. But, you know, this scares me. This fight scares me. So when I get scared, I back away. This isn't a pick and Petrie fight. So I'm backing away. But pick is Steven Peterson, Superman ch on the chest. Let's go. Next up, Daniel Pineda versus um, ba -ba -ba, Tucker Lutz. Knucker Tuts, Knucker Futs. Tucker Lutz from Baltimore, not Oklahoma. I discovered that last podcast. This fight screams Tucker by finish, but he doesn't finish many people. He doesn't finish anybody in the UFC. He doesn't really look good in the UFC. Daniel Pineda has been around for 2 million years, right? Long-time fighter. He's fought belts, he's fought PFLs, he's in the UFC. And everywhere he's gone, he's been busted with some kind of steroid thing. This guy's got the fucking juice in his veins. So, assuming he's been off for a year, two years, I think it's going on two years he's been off, after the eye poke with Andre Feely, where he gassed hard in that fight. But assuming this guy is off sauce, he's going to come in, he's going to give a good first round. He's a strong, well-built guy, at least he used to be. He's going to come in, give a good first round, and then he's going to fade. And I want to hammer Tucker nuts so bad by, the, by finish. But let, let's look at his record. Tucker, 96 strikes over Chase Gibson on the Dana White Contender Series, unanimous decision. Tucker, uh, Tucker Lutz, 34 strikes over Sherrod Blockfield on the Dana White Contender Series, but landed four takedowns, one sub attempt, kind of a lackluster performance. Debuts against um, in the UFC against Kevin Aguilar, who's very similar to Pineda, in my opinion. 99 strikes with three takedowns, and then he fell completely short against Pat Sabatini. Only threw 17 strikes. He got out, he got taken down five times. Sabatini's a stud. So there's no, there's there's no shame in the game. 
But the guy's landing 99 strikes. He's landing 89 strikes. He's not finishing these people. You know, Pineda is a pretty tough, durable guy. He's been in there forever, but I'm a little worried about the sauce. Like, just as much as I want to hammer Lutz, buy, I keep calling him nuts, Lutz, buy, finish, because the plus number is going to be juicy. And Pineda could just fall in his face, gas by the third round. We could, we could get something here. Pick his Lutz, Tucker Lutz. Don't love it. He's a good size favorite here at minus 260, which I hate that even more. Uh, maybe Pineda has found a new, you know, I don't want to, you know, allegedly, maybe, you know, maybe he's found a new scientist and maybe he's coming in just looking great. I don't know. Pause. This is just a pause fight. Give me Tucker. You know what? No, it's not a pause fight. No, I, I just made up my mind. Tucker Lutz is going to dominate this fight. He's going to dominate this fight. I just now realized Pineda has no takedown defense. Pineda has no cardio. Tucker Lutz has both those with some good volume. Appears to be pretty durable. Pineda doesn't scare me necessarily on the feet. I'm all over Tucker Lutz here. Just right now, made the decision. Boom. That's what we do here. We talk it out. And boom, I'm, I'm laying picks. I ain't, you know, scared money don't make no money, baby. All right, next up, you got uh, Chidi Njukwani with that timber voice. Versus Albert Durab, plus 145. Chidi is a minus 170. Now, I love Chidi. I love his brother, Anthony Njikwani. Uh, legends, early, early, early legends. WC, early UFC. Very good strikers. Chidi's big for this division. I loaded up on him. Uh, oh, Twitter going off. Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. There we go. More, more Colby stuff. I love <laughs> Ah, Chidi kind of made me lose my shirt a little bit in his fight with Robocop. I was fading Robocop because of that chin issue. Finally paid off his last time out, but Chidi landed that elbow, put a fucking big gaping vagina on his head, and then Robocop and then he gassed and Robocop took over. I mean, Chidi, that's his problem. You get him to the ground, you start making him grapple a little bit, you start filling up those muscles you know, with some blood and stuff like that, and then boom, he, he kind of collapses on you. He's not built for three rounds. He wants to put you out. Abadurayev Wants to get you to the ground. He's a wild striker on the feet. He's going to be undersized here. He's 5'11 or 6'3. Reach, you know, Chitty's got him, obviously. But Durev can get in, use that size advantage to him. The smaller guy get on the legs, take you down. He's a wild guy on the ground. He scrambles big, big punches. That's how he looks good. That's how he wins. But my biggest issue of hammering Durev is the guy gets knocked out. His four losses are all by knockout. And Chitty can crack. Chitty can bang, bang, baby. Um, I'm good to go, Durayev. Plus 145. That's dog money. Hello? Okay, this is dog. And I've been ice cold. I got to mix things up. I got to kind of go what I'm going with. I don't see this fight going to a card. So under two and a half is what I love. I'm picking Durayev. That's probably going to be a bet. Under two and a half. And let's just send him home, baby. I think Durayev, if he wins, he's going to win by finish. I don't think it's going to be a win by decision. I think he's going to win by finish. He's too aggressive on the ground. He's too heavy on top. As long as he doesn't get knocked out, I think he's he's going to just gas Chitty, and we're, we're looking at a, a a nice little TKO win for Dura. Maybe submission, but Chitty's submission awareness is pretty good, but I think maybe TKO on top after he gets tired. Give me Durev, dog. Give me under two and a half, which probably won't be the greatest number, and then give me send him home. Dura by TKO will probably be a nice little number there, definitely in the plus side, so send him home, Durev, and under. That's three picks, one fight. Three picks, one fight, and I lock one up, so... All right, next up, we got uh, Alex Perez, plus 145 versus Manal Cop. Minus 170. Minus 170 for Manal Cop. I think he should be minus 770. I love Manal Cop. That's my pick. That is not only my pick. That's my normal line. That's my normal line. Demon, baby. Love that voice. Wish my voice. That kind of what Chitty sounds like. Chitty and Jaquani, baby. That, well, he actually sounds way cooler than that. But Manal Cop versus Alex Perez. You look at Alex Perez. This is a guy that got you know, bolt it to the title shot, right? Loses it, had a contender series run that was good. Got on the contender series, win a bunch of fights, runs into Joe B. Joe B knocks him out like three times in that fight. Poor ref, poor officiating if, if you look at that fight. Then he rebounds against three more wins. All three wins are guys who do not fight in the UFC anymore, who never really had a great UFC run. Gets a shadow, title shot against Devison, gets choked out in the first round. Cancel bout, cancel bout, cancel bout, cancel bout. Comes back against Pantoja. They're not doing many favors. Gets finished in the first round there. Another cancel bout. Now we got Manal Cop. 
I feel bad for fighters that signed the battle line against Alex Press because who knows if he's going to come in, he's going to make it, if he's going to make weight, if he's, if he's motivated, if his mental's there, whatever. There's up and down, two fights in four years or whatever, one being a title fight, then you get Pantoja. Now you're getting Manel Cop who's clicking right now. This is a guy whose talent finally meets hard work. He wants AK, shirt up his wrestling, now he's in Vegas. I've heard rave reviews about this kid in the gym. He packs a big punch for 125. We're looking at 125 unders, flyweight unders, hammer the under on this, Manel Cop lock, slime forever as well. Um, I just think Perez has really good kicks and good striking. He struggles with the grappling. Manel Cop, though, I think is just a superior striker. Timing, speed, power, everything, explosiveness. Um, I don't think it's going to be super easy. My initial read was easy. I have now walked back that claim. I think Manel Cop is going to maybe start a little slow, watch the leg kicks, get his reads, and eventually pick apart Alex Perez, who has been clicked before, uh, ch uh, chin before by Joe B. I think Manel Cop lands on him. It's over. That's how much power I have in him. As long as we get the Manel Cop that has been fighting, I don't want to see this steady, you know, slow Pantoja Manel Cop who only threw 35 strikes. I want to see a guy in his face picking his spots because you can finish this guy. I like the finish as well. I like the under. That's my mortal lock. Slime ball candidate number two. Let's fucking go. <sighs> yeah, it's a good podcast. Jeez, man. It's good. My throat. My throat's arched a little bit, but we're good. Uh, next up, Andrew Lee, plus 200 versus Macy Barber, minus 240. Hard read fight for me. I like Macy Barber. I think she's she's a phenomenal talent. But after the Roxanne fight, after the knee injury, she just looked okay. She definitely lost to Miranda Maverick. Don't know how she got that win. And then let me let me see her stats. Actually, let me pull her up. So against Jessica I, she threw sixty three strikes. She nails precision against Montana De La Rosa. She landed one takedown through fifty strikes. And then this is this is the fight that I don't get. She split decisions. Miranda Maverick, 36 strikes with one takedown. And Miranda Maverick's 47 to one takedown. Don't know how she won that fight. That's pretty egregious. Obviously, we talked about the Roxanne fight. And then we talked about she came back against Loxa Grasso, who happens to be the champ, right? Who she outstruck and out and, and took down three times. So, um, you know, not a bad performance coming up in the injury. But her last two, the Jessica I fight, Jessica Eye's worst, right? Jessica I just, you know, she she needs to get out of there. Um, and I feel like she looked okay, but didn't look great. This This young girl who... Was going to be the youngest champion in the UFC. I, you know, I was, I was, I was ready for that. And then, I, you know, the knee injury happened. I think, still think she's kind of getting her confidence back. She's going against Andrea Lee, who is a volume fighter. She she throws out a lot of volume. She gets taken down like nobody's business. Though. I mean, uh, you know, she got taken down Viviana Arujo last time out three times. You know, she beat up Calvillo, but Calvillo got her once. Roxanne Montefiore got her four times. Lauren Murphy got her two times. Jordan Wood got her two times. Montana De La Rosa got her five times. I know these are going back a lot but if macy barber wants to grapple here this is a good path to victory for her. so i'm taking macy barber i think andrew lee is obviously getting better she's sharing up her game she used to kind of quit in fights and have some gas problems no longer high volume striker not a finisher macy barber can hang out on the feet i think if macy barber gets that nasty bitch i mean that the most confident way if she gets that nasty bitch back you know, stands up on the feet, throws with power, gets her down, gets on top. Macy's so good on top. At least she used to be. I haven't seen it in a while. Get her on top and just go for the finish. We need a Macy Barber finish here. If she wants to be champion, if she wants to be talked about, she's still very young, I know. Maybe I'm pulling the gun a little too early here. Maybe I'm pulling the shoot a little too early. But if she wants to be talked about, she wants to be considered champion material, you go out there, you finish Andrea Lee. Easier said than done, I know. But with this number, minus 240, you go out there and finish her. That's a sign ball candidate as well. Um, I just think Macy Barber, again, it's a tough read, but if she shows up, the Macy Barber that we all kind of know, there's a path of victory, and it's an easy one. Maybe not easy. Easy is a tough word. Next up, Nate the Train, baby! Minus 265 versus Austin Lingo, plus 225. So first and foremost, Nate's a little high for me, right? Nate, Nate's number is a little high, but I love Nate the Train. I love him so much. He's on the board. Hey, hey Nate the Train, baby! Nate the Train, baby! Uh, this could be maybe one of the fights in the night. These dudes do not take a step back. Austin Lingo, don't think he has the most polished striking. I think, you know, maybe, uh, you know, he's a little wild at times and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, doesn't take a step back and neither does Nate the Train. Nate the Train is a well-rounded guy. No, you know, you, you know. Hey, hey, Nate the Train, baby. That clogs you in Tennessee, baby. Uh, this dude is, is legit fireworks on and off the mic. My only concern, right? Because this is a slime ball candidate. I love Nate. I'm picking Nate. My only concern is sometimes when Nate fights a guy 
that maybe he sees beneath them, right? The, he needs a little bit of that fear to bring the confidence out. Onama, super confident. Onama's a killer. Beat him. Ludwig Klein going into that fight, super confident because Ludwig Klein was a fucking killer. Big underdogs in both the fights, and he wins, right? And then you got the Herbert Burns fight, and Herbert Burns is not the best fighter in the world. He goes out there and gets knocked out, right? First time in his career, got knocked out. And then he goes against Julian Rosa and just goes out there like a freight train. Nate to train, baby, and runs into those big, big hands of Rosa, and Rosa can put you out. Rosa, a very good fighter. But if he really is locked in against Austin Lingo, right? Boxing, I think Lingo's going to have a speed advantage. I don't think Nate's the fastest guy. I think Nate's very good in the clinch. He makes it ugly, right? I think Nate can mix in some takedowns, but it's going to be pace and cardio. Nate's going to be in his face the whole time. Smart fight for Nate Landwehr. This is a Nate Landwehr uh, decision victory, in my opinion. If you look at his record, what he did in Russia, I mean, him and Mozart Ivalov were supposed to fight in Russia. That was the big fight. They both signed to the UFC. Um, but, yeah, he killed it in Russia, Nate did. And, uh, you know, came in the UFC with a little bit of hype. I was hyped on him, you know what I mean? And then he just fell a little flat. But now he's starting to show his own a little bit. Got a couple wins. The the jitters are off. He's been hurt before. He's rebounded. You know, Anam almost had him out. Now he's rebounded well off that. You know, the chin isn't what it used to be. He's at MMA Masters. Looked to be in incredible shape. His cardio is elite. Give me Nate the train here, and we're going to play it one more time. Hey, hey, Nate the train, baby. <laughs> Nate the train, baby. Uh, slime ball candidate, Nate the train. I like it probably by decision. Lingo is tough. Uh, and Lingo can make this ugly because Lingo does have some decent power. I just haven't seen it in the UFC yet. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can't, I'm not gonna go. I picked against Nate the train enough. I well played Max Bet, David Onama, not doing that again. Uh, give me Nate the train, baby. Even though I do personally, Nate the train love aside, the line is a little high for me. All right, next up, co main event, Holly Holm minus 215 versus Yana Sakto's. Plus 185, plus 190. Again, all these lines are moving all over the place. I got these, you know, again, it's early in the week. Um, this fight threw a pause at me. I really want to take Giannis Santos as a dog lock here, right? I really, really want it to. Maybe not dog lock or dog shot, I should say. Um, I really wanted to. But I just couldn't because I just feel like sometimes she just doesn't have it in there. And she's coming up and she's got this super mom strength now coming off. You know, she just had a baby. So she's got those mom strengths, which I love, right? She's going to be a better fighter from that. You know, women are superheroes, but Holly Holm, 41 years old, has not looked good in her last few fights, but she throws a lot of volume. Her Caitlin Vieira fight. I hated that fight. I thought she won, but you know, what are you doing clinching all that time? You are one of the best female boxers in the world box. You are a kick, female kickboxer, world champion kick. You're an MMA world champion. Learn how to mix it up better. It's almost like she's regressing or or she doesn't have this confidence in herself. But Yana Kutsukaya, kind of a wild fighter, but if you get her down on her back, it's a problem. Yana Kutsukaya, excuse me, Yana Santos, how dare I? She's married now, right? So she got completely knocked out by Irene Adana. Irene Adana's a stud. She beat Caitlin Vieira. Caitlin Vieira threw seven strikes in that fight, landed three takedown zone, Kutsukaya. She fuck Santos. Landed 47 strikes. Santos uh, beat Julian Storlenko. Aspen Ladd landed two takedowns and finished her. Marion Renault landed a takedown. Uh, and then um, and then uh, Christine just, uh, or, yeah, fucking Christine just, you know, cyborg completely blitzed her. She got kind of fed to the wolves in that fight. But her wins, Lena Landsberg, okay, outstruck her, landed some takedowns, submission defense, no finish. Against Marion Renault, again, both women that did, she just fought on the older side. 98 strikes. Staying busy, land at one takedown, unanimous decision. Got finished by Aspen Ladd, got taken down, got on top, got beat up. And then you got Julia Storlenko, again, not the best in the world, has an arm bar, that's it, 43 strikes to six. And then Caitlin Vieira, who threw seven strikes, but three takedowns. That is a crazy stat. And then she got knocked out by Irene Adana. Holly Holmes should be looking at an Irene Adana fight and go, I can do that. I can knock her out. I might not have as much power as Idana, but I have the technique. So I'm going home here, but I don't love it. I mean, my initial read is home. I'm sticking with my gut. I would love the dog shot here. I see people in the MMA takes uh, betting group already taking some shots on Santos here. I don't have the nuts on the table yet. So I'm going to go home by decision. Uh, I think she can make it look easy if she's dialed in. She's 41. Cardio still elite, but the fight IQ and the way she's been fighting, I don't love. But if she fights smart, I think this could be an easy win for her. All right, next up. Main event, baby. 
Chito Vieira plus one fifty versus Corey Sanhagen minus one seventy five. I mean, you just you just don't get a better main event than this. Sorry, my Twitter is is a buzzing. Uh, Eric Thizzle. I guess I won this argument. Hate this motherfucker, man. Joe Carroll, my boy. Um, yeah, Anik was protected at all costs. Chimaev is the hero we need right now. Smash this boy. I love it. What a prick. Why didn't can't be controlled? Yeah. So a lot of, I mean, you got a lot of people pushing back on me. Again, I don't mean I'm going to go to Florida and fight Colby Covington because I'd be stupid. I would. John Anik, listen, swear to God, John Anik calls me right now and goes, hey, BP, he's to fly to Miami. I need you to sit at my house. Colby said he's coming tomorrow. I need you to be the, the big body until I get, you know, until I can sort it out or whatever the fuck, right? I'm taking that hit. I'll get the shit kicked out of me for John Anik. You, what he's done for me. Oh, bruises he heal, baby. I'll get the fucking piss beat out of me. I don't give a shit. Woo! All right, man, man. Chino Vera, Corey Sanhagen. Um, man, I love this fight. I love this fight. A lot of people are in Sanhagen. Sanhagen looked really good physically, cardio-wise, mixing everything up against Song Nong. Didn't land a lot of takedowns, but he went for a lot of takedowns, which is nice. Chino Vera, what is Cheeto's takedown offense? Because I feel like it's probably like 20%. Takedown offense, 68%. So way better than I gave him credit for. I just feel like... Cheeto's such a guy that goes with the flow. You want to take me down? Cool. I'll work off my back. I'll, I'll use my elbows. I'll work my way to the feet. Use that. He's so patient and flowy in there. And it could get him in trouble one day because he, he's losing these fights and then he comes back and wins. Five-round fight favors Cheeto Vera. But according to St. Hagen, Rafaan outstruck Cheeto Vera, right? But Cheeto landed the more impactful shots. Corn St. Hagen is super active. Outstruck Petrion. I think he's going to outstruck Cheeto. Cheeto, excuse me. If Cheeto can't land that big shot and finish court, I think this is going to be a, a layup decision win for Corey. He's not going to finish Cheeto. Cheeto's too good. But this could be a layup decision win for Corey. But Cheeto's built different. If you look at Rob Font and you look at Cheeto, got hit 271 times, barely had a mark on his face, barely sweating in that fight against Rob Font. Rob Font got hit like 100 or whatever. I mean, his face is falling off his face. I <laughs> mean, his face is falling off his face. Cheeto's different. Leg kicks are different. I think he's going to utilize all that, slow down Corey. Corey's going to win these early rounds, though. Five-round fight. We got some tricky judges. Do you want to load up on Cheeto? Mm -mm. You know, final fight of the night. So there's head spots. There's, you know, if you have parlays, you have this, you have that. There's options here. I think this fight goes to a decision. I think it's going to be razor close. Cheeto's been on the wrong end of a few decisions, but I think... The judges are now really scoring damage above everything else. And I do think Cheeto's going to be damaging Corey more than Corey's going to be damaging Cheeto. Cheeto's got, or Corey's got some great striking, but it's not as impactful as Cheeto's. Cheeto hits you, you fucking know it, from the legs, the body, the head. So, razor close fight. I love this fight. But again, you got to put the nuts in the tail. Hello? Dog lock. Okay, this is dog. Get yeah, the dog. Give me Cheeto from just overall toughness durability, and more damage. But I do think it's going to the decision. So the over four and a half is a great play, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I'm excited. This is this is high, high-level fight right here, man. I can't fucking wait. But uh, Cheeto, and I think Cheeto wins. I mean, 135 is so log jam. You got Sean promised the title shot. I love to see Cheeto, Sean run it back. I think Corey's got, even if he wins this fight, I think he's got to win maybe one more with the way Marab's up there and the more, you know, Suhudo and, and Aljo and all this shit. Um, either way, Incredible main event. All right, so let me give you my locks before I give you the slime ball. Lock, dog lock, Cheeto Vera. Just gave you that one. Motor lock, Manel Cop. And send him home, Albert Durayev. Going a little dog money here. A little dog money. Albert Durayev probably, you want to play it safe by finish because he could submit Cheedy, but I do think it's going to be like second round, third round TKO um, because Cheedy's going to gas or Durayev's going to get fucking sent home quick. Either way. Those are my picks. Slime ball parlay. Woo. All right. We got a nice one. We got a nice one. And I'm pretty confident in it. First leg, Manel Cop. Okay. Mortal lock, Manel Cop. Pfft, easy. Easy pick. Easy peasy pick, Manel Cop. Second leg. Nate the Train, baby. Hey, Nate the Train, baby. Listen, I love Nate the Train. This is, this is a tough slime ball card, right? It's a tough one. I deliberated and debated for a while. Um, it, 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 yeah, it's it's a it's a tough card. I was gonna put Macy Barber on that, but I have, even though I know chicks, okay, I know chicks, I have a trouble winning slime balls with women on it. I'm trying to win. We won last week. Let's keep us winning streak here. So Nate the Train, Manel Cop, 
and this one people are going to hate probably, but Tucker Lutz. I just, I feel it, boys. It's there. Tucker Lutz over Pineda. Nate the Train. Hey, hey, Nate the Train, baby. I'm sorry I played that 40 times. It's the best thing in the world. Nate the Train over Austin Lingo. And then uh, Manel Cop over Alex Perez. You're getting plus 205. 205. Woo! Woo! All right. Go to MMA Takes Podcast for all the merch needs. Got a new uh, little uh, one of these guys out there, a little Tumblr. It's not this one, but it's like this one. That's out there, putting new shirts out. You know, I'm still rocking the brain, but I got all these other cool shit out there. You know, um, they're really nice, really soft. Podcast juice, hammer time with the green hammer uh, bet. You got the slime ball parlay. You got the new logo. This is the old logo. You got a bunch of stuff up there. It's really, really cool. You want anything? You want to, you know, hey, BP, I need a fucking bucket hat. Hey, BP, I need a hoodie. Let me know. I'll throw it up on the shop. Hey, Brian Petrie, MMA on all social medias, IG, Twitter, and hit that fucking subscribe button. Be a part of 1K, baby, Club 1K. And uh, I love every every single one of you. Let's win some money this week. You know what? I just decided I'm going to win some money this week. 